So many of you asked me to review this motherboard and boy am I happy uh, to have done so. I should always be listening to you. As a matter of fact, the very first comment asking me to do something on this video, I will do it. There, I said it. Obviously, I will be doing some heavy comparison between uh, the Rock Strix B850F Gaming and its more expensive E variant uh, sibling that I had reviewed a few days ago and you should be uh, 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 checking out if you haven't done so. So today we're reviewing the magnificent ROG Strix B850F Gaming Wi-Fi from Asus, the board which will make you regret spending your money on healthcare instead of your new gaming build. Fun fact for you, Airpiece Simplex B is easily avoidable if you replace every sexual encounter you'd ever have with watching my channel. Starting with the obvious, the ROG Strix B850F Gaming Wi-Fi retains a very robust 8 PCB layers which has been guaranteeing a perfect insulation as well as an improved component cooling. And this is a very first step towards a premium motherboard of any kind today. Design-wise, this year's uh, Strix plays nicely between a retro 8-bit feel and a more modern laser-cut metal dressing. We are still into the serious dark uh, uh, space theme, but the Strix retains some punk fun uh, underlines here and there with a bit of uh, turquoise and pink logoing going around. The board RGB retains a rather classy 8-bit large rug I logo, no tacking embedded RGB LEDs, thank god, but instead we have our usual three addressable RGB connectors for the most creative amongst us. CPU socket wise, our AM5 is here and continues to provide a wide support of Zen 5 powered processors. But most importantly, chipset wise, well, we have that little jewel of a silicon, the B850 chipset, which has stormed the motherboard industry by surprise and proposes the very same PCIe 5.0 support than seen on its much more expensive X870 and X870e versions. The only trade-off here is that B850 motherboards are marginally less USB rich. Uh, USB 4 plugs are more rare, but when you see that the price difference goes from simple to double, from B850 to X870 motherboard, and you still retain all this PCIe 5.0 bandwidth yumminess, well, uh, um, the USB thing is something we gladly forego. Now, VRM wise, well, our Strix B850F features a very powerful 1880M power stages organized in a 14 plus 2 plus 2 configuration, which is only 180M less than seen on its much more expensive Rock Strix B850E gaming Wi Fi sibling. And to be absolutely honest with you, it's not enough of a difference to notice any processing delta between the two models. The real difference we will notice is on the hit side of things. Having a smaller power stage means that it hits faster, but the Strix B850F is not running out of passing cooling arguments to counter that. It shares the same cooling solution than seen on the other B850 Strix motherboard, a main block with a smaller yet very efficient radiating roof, a large main wall for heat storage, and several winglets to allow a large air contact. Both blocks features the double contact design for a more intimate VRM heat relief. The only limiting factor here is the absence of a copper pipe which would have homogeneously spread the heat between both blocks, but given the price segment of the board, it is far from surprising. Now, temperature results are exactly where I would have expected them to be. After an hour-long synthetic stress test, the absence of a linking copper pipe translates into a noticeable temperature differential between both blocks. The main block remains below the 40 degrees Celsius, while the side block gets closer to the 50 degrees Celsius limit. Now, for the both of them, temperatures peaked at about 15 minutes, identifying the precise point where our block's heat saturation is reached. In all and for all, the temps are stellar and are way below any kind of damaging point for the board, hinting at a long-lasting product. We even have some thermal room for some uh, overclocking, because the B850 chipset is overclockable or overclocking-able or 
overall Aces delivers a, a VRM solution which remains loyal to the Strix branding. Powerful, agile and ice cold. An absolute pleasure to witness as a reviewer. Now, I would not want to see this board paired with anything less than a Ryzen 7, but even a Ryzen 9 will find this as a as a very comfy home in any kind of clock and overclocking configuration. So obviously a very big VRM kudos to Asus for this. Now RAM wise, our Strix F supports up to 256 gigabyte of DDR5 RAM rated for an 8,000 million transfers per second worth of data swap organized in a dual channel configuration. The board checks all the right boxes. Uh, it gives us the ability to have at least one very large 64 gigabyte uh, stick to get to the upper transfer rate, which will be great not only for AAA gamers, but more noticeably for production oriented users, giving yet an additional uh, versatile um, uh, argument to the B850F. Now, storage wise, well, we have our usual four NVMe connectors, one less than seen on the B850E. Now, the first two are unbifurcated PCI 5.0 enabled, meaning that they can both and individually swap data up to that blazing 128 gigabit per second we all want to reach. And because there are no bifurcations to them, which is a bigger deal than it sounds given that many x870 more expensive boards fail to do so, you could potentially read these sticks and get to an unreal 256 gigabit per second total speed. Mind blow. Cooling wise, both of our sticks uh, benefit from a thermal padded heat shield, but only the closest one to the CPU retains a very premium cooling attention, getting a double thermal pad treatment and receiving that huge, tall, dense piece of aluminum. And it is also the only stick to feature a screwless removal latch, which is not only sturdy, but does a great job at giving a very tight fit to the stick. The two other connectors can support two PCI 4.0 enabled sticks fed by four lanes coming from the B850 chipset each. That means a very fast 64 gigabit worth of data swap individually. And since they benefit from the same thermal padded heat shield uh, we've seen before, we can rely on them without fear of any kind of thermal throttling. I do want to note that for the first time ever, we only have two SATA 3 plugs instead of four, which further signals the retirement of that loyal but two decades old standard. Overall, it's as premium as you could hope to get out of a $250 or under uh, uh, motherboard. I, I want to underline how special it is to have an unbifurcated access to two PCIe 5.0 NVMe connectors, both in performance and, and uh, uh, future proofing. So a big, big storage kudos for ASUS. Two ASUS for that. Export wise, I applaud the fact that we only have two 16 slots export. No wasted bandwidth or money here. Our GPU export has a bulk of our CPU PCIe 5.0 lanes for an optimal and future proofed gaming comfort. And naturally, it does also feature a metallic reinforcement. Uh, it would have not escaped you that we have no GPU removal apparatus here, and that's because this export features a famous Q-Slim release mechanism, which uses a trigger to quickly and easily lock in or free your GPU in a second. Nice and clever. Now, the second chipset Fed export features four lines at PCIe 4.0 standard, which would be great for a PCIe-based storage solution, but at the cost of this M.2 solid state draft connector, since they are sharing the same bandwidth. And frankly talking, as long as Asus didn't touch our PCIe 5.0 uh, bifurcation, didn't bifurcate any bandwidth out of them, I would not care any less. I'm happy as a bunny. I guess I should do that. Now, back IO-wise. Well, this is where things get interesting because all that storage and export PCIe 5.0 bandwidth was taken from somewhere and, well, it was taken from here. We have a rather limited 70 gigs per second worth of USB plugs. And when I say limited, it's actually not that bad, especially knowing that it is completed by an additional 15 gigabit per second worth of connectors for a total of 85 gigabit per second. Now, fun fact for you, this is the very same total I had seen on its competitor a few days ago on the MSI MAG P5 
P850, Tomahawk, Max, Wi-Fi. So yeah, it seems like this PCIe 5 slash USB uh, configuration is quite popular amongst manufacturers this year. Now, we also have a couple of video outputs for integrated graphics. That's beautiful, but most importantly, connectivity wise, we got an updated solution. Nothing fancy, but nevertheless updated. We have a rather good 2.5 gigabit LAN, but most importantly, we have our fiber graded, low latency, fast uh, Wi-Fi 7 dual band adapter. Uh, but the only sad note I have here is, is that it's been cut, it's bandwidth, instead of being 5.8 gigabit per second on that you can see on every other Wi-Fi 7 out there it's been cut in half it's only 2.9 gigabit per second and, and why it bothers me the fact that I'm not certain it was necessary I feel like it's been capped to motivate a more expensive purchase I'm, I'm not saying I, I could be wrong but yeah my, my bullshit uh, uh, smellometer is uh, smellometering Finally, audio-wise, we have a rather premium LC4080 from Realtek with all the cleansing capacitors and dedicated PCB sheets to output a complex, high-fidelity sound and produce a static-free recording for, say, the streamers out there. Overall, the big absent here is a USB 4.0, but like I said, on B850 motherboard, it's not surprising. I think the most important here is that Asus did a great job. Uh, maintaining several plugs, even though it had to use some legacy standard. Like I said, this is not the most best, better Bakayu you'll see, but it plays it solidly above average. Now, I do need to mention that if this was not enough, you know, bandwidth or Bakayu plugs for you, we do have a Thunderbolt 4 connector, so at a cost, you can always, you know, upgrade your board with an extra 40 gigabit per second worth of bandwidth. Good to know. Now, cooling-wise, well, our Strix F stays in the norm with its seven PWM fan connectors, including one which can double up as an all-in-one water pump. We also have a thermal sensor which goes towards a single loop custom water cooling system. It's not completely out of the question here. Troubleshooting wise, again, we have uh, what we could expect. Uh, um, an easy debugger for a vague indication of where a problem may lie. Uh, our clear CMOS and flashback button for CPU less bias update on our back IO. And I do appreciate a soldered power button, which is an unexpected premium touch here. Now, in conclusion, the Rock Strix B850 gaming Wi-Fi will cost you about 255 bucks before taxes, which is anywhere between $50 to $100 cheaper than its B850e bigger sibling. And the whole question is, do we lose a lot of the features we saw on the excellent Rock Strix B850 gaming Wi-Fi? B850e gaming Wi-Fi, sorry. Quick answer is a solid no. Truth of the matter, it retains the bulk of what made the B850e such a must-buy. The imposing VRM, the absolute master control in terms of bandwidth availability, and the memory versatility and what this board can do. Now, in short, what I can say is that if you're looking for what is probably the most premium, most powerful, most sturdy, most bandwidth-hungry motherboard today at that price range, the, the 200 to $300 motherboards, there's really no better value and nowhere else your money wants and needs to be.